next generation network will be very expensive and the return will be very uncertain. Do we need less stringent regulatory framework to afford this challenge? The present framework was established mainly when the competition, let me say, with the old network started. And it has been done a very important role to adapt these rules to the new scenario with the new technologies. But I believe that it will be necessary, both again at a country level, at a national level, at the European level to leave more freedom to the uh, uh, telco uh, to the telco operator so that uh, they can be more sure that they, they are today that uh, what they spend for their investment can return when offering new new services there is a feeling that uh, in terms of being able to invest in particularly optical fiber for the uh, access part of next generation networks that some stability is necessary for people to be able to invest. Um, one of the problems is that the uh, large margins that the telecoms business in general used to enjoy when I started in the business um, have now decreased and the volumes are going up rapidly, the uh, costs are going up nearly as rapidly um, but the revenues, generally speaking for network operators, are level and in some cases decreasing. That's partly due to um, market trends, but it's also due to ha network operators, because of the regulatory regime, having to open up their, market, uh, their, their networks to other players. That does create some lack of stability in terms of making some long-term projections on when would you get some return for your investment? So I think there is an argument and there is a, a body of opinion um, across Europe that, which says that um, we do need to think about perhaps softening the regulatory requirement for network operators to open up the networks for other players to use. There is a need perhaps to soften that requirement in order to give the network uh, operators sufficient uh, confidence for some long-term investments and uh, that's certainly happening in some parts of Europe but it's, it's not a European-wide movement as yet. Thank you. The regulation did some good in the beginning because um, it gave access to some small companies really to enter into the competition because in the beginning we had just one big company, the, the main company, but now we have also some other smaller companies coming to the competition. But at the end, I think the regulation, because they are very strict, they, I think they overregulate, and this may do some harm into the advancement of the telecom uh, sector. For example, in some cases, we have some main companies in the whole Europe, Deutsche Telekom, Vodafone, in Greece the same, by the main operators, they want to invest in fiber to the X, but then the, regula the regulator comes and um, they put some strict uh, strictness and finally the operators do not like to invest in those new technologies. So I think the overregulation is not so good, but some regulation has to exist. Well, there's a lot of debate in this area and, and I think when I hear people talking, everybody seems to have the, the good reason for, for what they are saying. The fact is that it's very complicated. The, the real crucial question is the fact that these infrastructure are costly and they are going to remain costly for, for a number of years. And revenues is a big question mark. And the big question mark is the fact that people are used to have what they have today and they are not willing to pay more for what they might have. And also all the industry that is providing services is providing service for what they can do today with the current infrastructure. So there's no need actually from the user point of view to spend more for getting something they are already getting today. Uh, having said that, I think that uh, if you're looking at Italy, uh, the telecommunication market in Italy is about 40 billion Euro, uh, euros. And uh, this is just a fraction of the old GDP. Our old GDP is about 1,600 billion euros. 
Now, rather than trying to expand these 40 billion euros by putting GM, uh, new generation network and so on, and open to, to have customer paying for that, why don't you think in terms of saying, hey, if I'm putting this kind of infrastructure, I can dramatically change this uh, production of 1,600 billion euros. And if I can only manage to have a 5% of that uh, 1,600 billion euros of uh, free cash because of a uh, more um, effective way of doing things, I'm immediately liberating, freeing 80 billion euros. That's twice the market of telecommunication in Italy today. And this applies to many other countries. So I think that we have to look into perspective and say the information society is going to change the rule of the games everywhere, not just in telecommunication. And because of the change of the rule of the game, we are going to have a lot of opportunities also for telecommunication. If we think uh, the last uh, 10 years, uh, the European Commission moved in a competition between the operators that launch uh, an, uh, an economical development of the telecommunication. At the moment, uh, the fragmentation of the operator or the operator don't guarantee the investment for the new generation access network. So also the incumbent operator is not uh, encouraged to invest in this part of the network because they have to open the network to the other operator. So I think that uh, could move in a cooperation, a strong cooperation between operators in order to reduce uh, these rules, strong rules, and uh, launch uh, the competition in the NGA net network only in the mid-term. A definite yes. A definite yes, and I can tell you why. Deutsche Telekom is currently deploying fiber optics in major cities. It costs a lot of money to deploy these optics, and uh, with, the regulation, with the regulation, Deutsche Telekom is forced to offer that access to the customer at a small price, which does not pay Deutsche uh, Telekom costs. It, has, it is forced to offer that access to competitive uh, companies, but not at the price it costs for Deutsche Telekom. At the end, it's a subsidiary to the competitor. And uh, therefore, it's of course only obvious that Deutsche Telekom thinks twice before deploying fiber optics, costly fiber optics in, in areas. So the business case must be 150% proven. If Deutsche Telekom for example, had some security from the, the regulator that says, well, the first three, the first four years you may use this uh, infrastructure you deployed exclusively, I'm certain that uh, the deployment would be much quicker than it is now. Well, um, I'm absolutely not convinced of that, uh, that we would need a, a less stringent uh, framework uh, because um, what we, we are still struggling in Europe with uh, a lack of competition and uh, so, so since the deregulation uh, late 90s uh, uh, the, the let's say the challengers uh, in, in markets in Europe are not necessarily all doing well and this is because uh, the regulation was not um, fully adapted to make sure that there would be full competition. So the incumbent um, operators versus the newcomers. Uh, and so I wouldn't say that we have to, to loosen up uh, regulation now in order to stimulate the market. Uh, you, you, will, you will need um, sound policies in Europe uh, where, where, let's say, the, the, the whole aspect of competition is still in the foreground, but on the other hand, we will also need in Europe a pragmatic approaches. Uh, that was one of the discussions in, in the session uh, that just ended here in the Congress uh, on will will we go f or will Europe at a certain moment uh, go for continuation of net neutrality or will companies like Google and others uh, have to pay for services they bring what they call over the top to wherever in the world at no charge for the transport of those uh, services. So, so lots of problems will have to be tackled in the coming years and which will obviously be important also for the positioning of uh, European operator groups uh, and of industry obviously. So, so I agree that uh, we, we, will have, uh, we, we will have several things not a ch choosing for relaxing regulation, 
uh, there will in certain areas be relaxing of regulations uh, over the coming five or ten years probably but on the other hand we will have to to fit in certain uh, problem areas I'm not advocating now that net neutrality should go uh, should go but maybe in the margin certain things will have to be done and in order for the operators also to further invest and to be stimulated f to invest in in their networks in future the regulatory framework may be helpful for this project I think um, it's necessary um, a regulatory framework uh, but not uh, excessive. Uh, finally, only for protect the uh, small enterprise uh, who begin uh, its business is uh, facilitate the entry. But the business uh, will be uh, established in function of the new services to develop uh, new service for the customers, new uh, expectatives. Uh, like uh, the uh, product industries uh, is uh, the, sim the similar uh, form uh, because it's not uh, not possible to live in a world uh, totally regulated eh? not excessive regulating the minimum for uh, avoid to uh, establish uh, uh, stop it eh? the, the development of uh, uh, there are in Spain because, uh, for example, there are the many, many uh, new uh, business in internet or new business the services, eh? the new services is uh, the, the operator don't uh, uh, can't uh, um, uh, can't avoid to develop this this business. No? Uh, in Spain, we uh, talk about the neutrality of the network. Eh? Necessary the neutrality of the network eh? to avoid uh, a position not uh, um, excessive, eh? the, the protection for uh, avoid the development of the new business. Eh? It's necessary to uh, promote the employee, promote uh, the new possibilities. Eh? Uh, in the in the ICT enterprise. Uh.